Hello everybody, my name is Tiffany, I'm the Tipsy Artist, and today we are going live with our lovely Patriotic Barn. So let me start by showing you the model. All right, here we go. We have the Love Barn, it's so beautiful. Okay, so it's going to be cute. We've got our little mushrooms and our barn and our flag and some lovely clouds in the sky. So lots of really awesome techniques to share with y'all today. So there that is again. All right, and I will be posting this on the video as well so you can reference it. And here is our trace. We're all ready to go. And let me talk to you about the kit that we've got. So it will come to you with a barn, a flag, a little mushroom. There's all kinds of fun stuff that it'll have with it. So that'll all be with your kit. And then it also comes with paint and brushes and the canvas. All right, so and what I always tell beginners is with the templates, I recommend using your pencil first to do the trace around everything. And then once you're happy with it, then you can firm that up with a Sharpie too. But uh, make sure, and Sharpie is always optional if you're just never really quite comfortable with it, I get it. But I actually prefer it. It helps me have that really nice line that will bleed through paint, which comes in handy quite a bit. So when you get a little bit more confident, this is actually a great tool. And hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. All right, so we've got our trace done. My sweet and super handsome hubby helped me this morning. So I was like rushing out the door, doing some orders at the last minute. And uh, my husband actually traces for me today. So he's so awesome. All right, so here we have, we have Kathy, Rolinda, Alicia. That's all I can see on the screen. There's more people, but I can't see your names. But Howdy, y'all. Welcome, welcome. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start with the background first. And I'm going to start by mixing up some beautiful turquoise. That's what I love in my patriotic sky. So I just love turquoise. I love a turquoise sky. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We are... Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, I found this. Uh, somebody said, love your uh, necklace. And I found this this morning. I haven't worn it in forever. It was kind of buried. And I was like, ooh, I need to bring that back out. That's lots of fun color. All right, so we've got big dollop of blue, big dollop of white, and then a big dollop of green. We're going to mix all that together. Speaking of lots of fun colors. And then push all that together. And that gives us a gorgeous turquoise color. And then I love having a lot of white nearby too. So I will go ahead and push this into my sky and I just kind of crisscross back and forth here. That gives me some really pretty texture in my sky. Then I'll also push into a little bit of white, just like that. Push that back and forth. That's also some really nice texture in there. That is really pretty. I'm liking that a lot. I hope y'all are staying cool today. I am sort of <laughs> staying cool. I keep, I have this vision in my head right now of um, Robin Williams as Mrs. Doubtfire saying he's melting like a snow cone in Phoenix. <laughs> That's kind of what I feel like right now. Uh, I have a fan going. I'm back in my sunroom. And it is, it's really nice in here, but well, you see, I get hot flashes, and so <laughs> cheers to everybody else who may have that. Oh my goodness. It's kind of a new thing. Always feels so new, <laughs> so lovely, <laughs> so fresh. <laughs> so I'm like, oh my gosh. And for those of you who used to always paint with this live, a year ago, you might know Mr. David Smith. It's funny, he is young, he is super young, but I remember all through his um, 30s, he would get hot flashes. And, uh, and I was always super cold natured. And so he and I were kind of, we'd feud over the AC. Yeah, power surges, yes, I like that. Getting a power surge right now, super lovely. But I thought, man, I wish we could 
If like if he and I could hang out now, we would be right in sync. We would love it. We would just be blowing that cold air on us like crazy. Yeah, but David is at home now. He may pop on here in a little bit. All right, so I am now doing some of that cut-in work. So when I was out here in the big portion of the sky, I'm turning that brush handle over to the side and just crisscrossing back and forth. And that gives me a light kind of a feathering stroke that helps blend the white in with the turquoise. Then when I have to do the cut-in work, then I change how I hold the brush and I hold it more like a pencil and then that will give me a nice line edge. So that gives me a lot of control there around those little lines, straight lines of the barn. Now I am having, let's see, a little bit of, I forgot about my mushroom over here. So I'm running out of room and if you have an easel and you're dealing with this, you wanna go ahead and pull it to the front of you. If, a lot of you are working on a tabletop so it, it won't matter that much, but I'm gonna have to pull this out so that I can Continue that line all the way down and not get cut off there. So I'll do the same thing here. And then I'm gonna to have to probably switch to a smaller brush. But I'm going to continue to kind of feather this out as much as I can. And then let me switch to a smaller brush here. Let's see, we've got, let's do little buddy. All right, a little bit of white, a little bit of blue, a little bit of green. That's the mix again. We're doing turquoise. That's a lot darker. Whoops. So I'll kind of blend that back in. Boy, this is a very stiff brush. Sometimes that happens. It's kind of random. And sometimes we love it, and sometimes we like the flexibility of different brushes, so. I'm gonna also, just gonna almost like sketch it around a little bit so I get this nice little sketchy texture here. And thankfully, turquoise has super good coverage, so it's actually working here. And now I need to kind of feather this back out again. So I'm going to go ahead and lightly turn that brush over to the side. And that'll help blend all that back in. And you see how I adapted a little bit? Because I actually, it, when I went back to remix, it was way darker than what I had going on. So then I had to push in a lot more white. And then I just sort of feathered it back into the mix by crisscrossing the brush back and forth. And then while the paint's still wet, then I can lightly keep that blend going so that it doesn't look like a big difference between one color and the next color. All right, so now we have all of our beautiful sky done, yay! All right, so that's done. Next up, we're gonna do, continue on more color blocking, so we're gonna go ahead and do our red barn. So that is a next big chunk of beautiful color here. You can also do a white barn, by the way, that's also really pretty too. But we're gonna go ahead and do a red one. And let's see, I need my mama brush and just pure red paint on this. So I'll push into that, make sure I get a nice layer of paint on the top side here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and turn this over to the side as much as I can. Now, sometimes as you're doing your cutting work here, you just, there's no choice. You have to go ahead and turn that handle just like a pencil and then go ahead and line it out and then we'll do the same thing up here and then here now what you'll notice right away is that as you hold the brush more like a pencil especially with red it's going to become really transparent so it definitely forces you to come back in with a second coat, but also a difference in how you hold the brush. So I'll, I'll go ahead and do my cut-in work and get that all into those smaller shapes. Then I'll make sure I have a lot of uh, paint on the flat side of the brush, and then I'll just hold it over to the side and just lightly 
apply that into those areas as much as I can by turning that brush as much as I can over to the side. And that helps give me a deeper, darker red there. That just takes a little bit of time. And as big of a brush as you can to get into that smaller space. And that basically eliminates a lot of the brush strokes too. So that's very helpful. All right, so I'm gonna take the line edge here. And by the way, since I have done a permanent marker over the surface here, if you happen to get in and around your little windows at the beginning, not a big deal, because we're gonna come back into those here in a minute with black, and so it won't matter. Because the Sharpie line will definitely peek through the red paint. So you can relax a little bit with this. See how I'm just, eh, just kind of being, I'm super relaxed, I'm just painting into that window, not caring. You can do that too. hair is like getting caught in my brush and coming in my face. All right, let's keep this going. So I've got my line edge cut and work done. And then I just lightly pull out to the side. Now I do want to be super careful around the flag. I don't want to be too relaxed there because I've got white lines in the flag. And so I don't want to, I'm not exactly sure where I'm, I'm going to start on that, so I need to be careful and not interrupt that space at all because we want that white line to be super clean. And that's a challenging correction to make, to try to come in over red with white. Thank you. Yeah, me too. This has always been one of my favorites. I have, man, I have a lot of red barn paintings, a bunch because you can really be creative with them. You can do lots of different designs. In fact, there was one that I have, well, it was supposed to be a show right before the whole pandemic thing, but it had a big giant sunflower that was kind of like really large and out of scale right next to the red barn. That was brand new, another brand new red barn. And then I had another one with a silo on the property, which was also really pretty. And I still haven't even done those yet as a class. And I found them the other day, like on a class that had been taken to the dark side, if you will. It was like turned off and hidden. And I found all those classes that I was like, oh, all the classes that never got to happen. And I was like, there are those new paintings I haven't done yet. So I'll have to, Bring those back into the light. We'll have to do those too. Those will be fun. All right, so again, we can do my little line edge here. Get that line edge right next. Be careful near the flag. We gotta be careful with that area. And then pull out into the larger area by turning that brush over to the side. Right, just like that. Again, not worried about the windows, and here's why, because those will be black, and so it's really easy to paint black. Black covers over everything. So I can, as you can see, uh, the Sharpie definitely bleeds through. And then also, if you don't feel comfortable with Sharpie and you're just using a pencil for your sketch, the other thing you can do is you can paint your whole barn red and that way it helps you relax through the process a little bit. You can let it completely set up and dry or like hit it with a hair dryer to make it dry really quickly. And then once it's all completely dry, then you can always take your template and come back over the top and reline little shapes. All right, so we've got really pretty good coverage there on that. And then I can also do my red stripes now. Okay, so I will do and for me, it's usually easier to do stripes in a horizontal stroke. It, I just have better control that way. Ooh, I need to turn my, my canvas is right near the edge. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it this way for just a moment while I do my stripes. And so I've got my first stripe here as red. And I realize it's red on red, but we will come back in with black 
at the end and we'll define that and then I'll make that pop out in front again because it is becoming a little bit lost with those two right next to each other. But we'll fix that. All right, so there's the first stroke. And then I'll come in with the next one here. So I want to skip a line. Take that all the way across. By the way, this is the mama brush. And then we'll do another one. And then we're done. And now you can definitely see, I wasn't exactly sure where we'd land on which white would be next to the red, the red barn, but definitely glad I was super careful here. And see, now that I have this going this direction, if I see any transparency happening here, I can also kind of come back in over the top with a nice second coat of red to really help this be more vibrant over the top here. Like I'm noticing a lot of brush strokes happening here, so I'm gonna do the same thing up here and fill in with one more coat with a really gentle hand, again, laying that brush over on the side and just pulling this all the way through. All right, so that's looking, see it, that's really smoothing it out. So it was really kind of choppy earlier. That's smoothing it out quite a bit. All right, so now we've got that done. Yay, good job. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do, I've got a little bit more red here with the top of the mushroom. All right, so I need a smaller brush and this mushroom has a lot of curve to it. So I like using the little bit brush. And so little bit is great for curves and small areas. So I'll go ahead and take that around the top. My sweet husband, he is a wonderful artist and he had to freehand these mushrooms on because I decided to spontaneously add them and we didn't have a template, but he's a great artist, so he helped me out. He just drew them on there. All right, let's see. Hmm. All right, so again, for our step right now is just color blocking, so it's doing all the solid color into the surface. I have a little bit of some beautiful cobalt blue to do in the top part of our flag here. All right, and so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, my little bit brush again will be perfect because again, lots of little curves in here. So I'm going to keep it mostly blue with a little tiny touch of the white. Thank you, thank you. Yes, it's getting there. All right, so blue and white. And I'll rotate this into a nice fine point, just like that. And then I'll go ahead and take this around that shape. So having that little bit of white pigment in the color really helps give it really good coverage over the top. So I'll continue filling all this in. And I can actually let the white of the canvas be my white. Let that work for you. Because the canvas is painted and primed white. So you can cheat with that. So, I'll, for example, on the flag, you can let that white be your white. Now, I will say this. If you really enjoy a little bit more of a refined look, which I totally get, and you definitely want the textural feeling of the white paint over the top, you can certainly do that. However, it's a must that you wait for all this red to absolutely set up and dry because it will bleed, it will you know, mix with that red and give you a pink. And then the other thing you can do, I'm not sure I'm gonna get adequate dry time on mine, but I will say that you can make a little bit more of like a distressed old weathered white. Say that white's been, I like up your flag, it's an old flag, it's been up there for a hot minute. 
And so you can I teach this in a flat. I should probably add this class. It's a really, it's just painting a flag. It's pretty awesome though. But so you can take a little bit of white here and then do a teeny tiny touch of gold. More people. All right, so we have Laura and Leota. I hope I'm saying your name right. That's such a pretty name. And then Kim. So you can't, you can't reinforce my audible I got. You can't, ah, you can write back, but if I don't say the name right, it's hard to, it's hard to tell me I'm not saying a name right. I'm trying my best, but. Okay, so on the old white look, got my new mask. Yay! Hey, which one? I have a whole bunch. You know, this is terrible. I have not ordered one of my own masks. <laughs> <laughs> I make them on Zazzle and by the way I am now a pro designer on Zazzle I've had such good sales with all my designs that they made me a pro designer and uh, so yay that's pretty awesome okay um, but so I need to order my own mask I haven't done that yet I've had a lot of people give me masks that were, were super sweet to take care of me during this time and so I've been using all those and I want to order the, my favorites are the Serapi and uh, there was another one I did, I'll have to think about it. I, I'm liking my new headdress that I just did. All right, so I've got like a dirty white here, which is like white and just a teeny amount of gold and see how that looks a little bit kind of old and distressed. That could be kind of an older look if you want to make your white on your flag look a little bit more um, antiques. Oh yes, the cheetah floral one. Yeah, I like that one a lot too. Yeah, I know, I need to order my own mask too. <laughs> and then I kept wondering, is this really gonna last? Like are people really gonna keep on wearing masks? And they are, it's a thing. So I gotta do it. All right, so here we go. I am going to push in, I've got more color blocking to do. I'm saving my black until the very end. And so, uh, let's see. Oh, Audrey's on here now. Howdy, y'all. Okay, so I want a little bit of a light taupe color here. So I'm going to do a little bit of white, little tiny amount of gold, teeny tiny touch of the black, like super, super teeny. Can y'all see that? So tiny. So I'll push that in. It gives me kind of a light taupe color. And I want this to still be really light. So I'm gonna push back in more white tiny brush, and then I will go ahead and fill this into the base. And also this is another area where you wanna make sure, I'm just being really careful, but you do wanna be careful next to that red because it'll push all this color and make it into like a mauve or a pink color, which is not what we want. So you have to be careful there. So I would recommend ideally letting that set up and dry. All right, so I've got my base there with that color. Again, just real simple color blocking still. All right, so I think we're almost done with the exception of just black color blocking. And then after that, then we're gonna have fun with all the really cool pattern and stuff that comes in over the top. I'm so happy you like your mask, that's exciting. Yeah, there's all these places that I go they you know they absolutely require them to come in so I'm just doing so much online still that I never I don't wear them that much and my hubby does all the grocery shopping and he wears gloves and he wears a bandana and he's like very fierce and serious about it so yeah we're, we're being careful still all right so let's go ahead and do some beautiful beautiful black Yay! All right, so we have little windows to do. We have the barn door to do. And I'm gonna start with my mama brush here. So I'm gonna press back and forth into the black paint. Oh, and I can, let's do the, the line art here first. Wait, I have another issue. All right, I wanna make sure I can go right off the edge here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out to the side or you could turn it to a horizontal too. So I'm gonna hold the brush like a pencil and I'll do the little line. That'll be my cut in work. And then that way I know I got right up next to that edge carefully 
and then I'll go ahead and turn the brush more over to the flat side and then fill all this in. This is our foundation work. And then we have little windows we need to do. Now, if mama's a little bit big for your taste on this, I would say you could switch over to a little buddy brush and then just take it real slow and just be a little bit more patient with the process and fill in these little windows. My red is still wet, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull that excess off and just wipe it on my plate so I can get really good coverage here with the black. Pretty easy to do there. And that's happening because my red's still wet. So if, like, if your red is set up and dry, then you wouldn't even have to worry about that step because this black would just rest right on top. All right, so we've got our windows all done again. Now I need to do the roof line, make sure that's all done. And still using my mama brush because it actually fits perfectly into that shape. But again, if you want to take it a little bit more slow and be careful, you can do your little buddy brush so you can see, see how the end is quite a bit tinier so you can take it slow that way. All right, another safeguard you can do here too is hold the brush more like a pencil, get that cut in work done on the outside edges. And that'll give you more confidence because it's actually to me easier to do the line work here like this. And then here in a minute, I'll just fill in by turning it more to the side. And then if I have those boundaries, then I feel more comfortable going back into that space. It also helps your eye just have guidelines. So that helps too. All right, so now we can go back into that area. And you can also kind of see how it might be easier for you to do your little buddy because it's just right there. It's kind of a snug fit. So let me give you a little visual on what that would look like. Ew. That brush is toast. Hard as a rock. That means my honey washed. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. All right, this one's flexible. Little buddy, here we go. So it takes a little bit longer to do it with little buddy, but. It's not as scary, because you get a little bit more room, and so you can kind of work into those boundaries. Just take your time, be patient with it, and just push that through in that area. And then from here, going up, I wanna make sure I get a flat line at the base, so I'll go ahead and take it in reverse and then fill back in. All right, so now I've got all my color blocking completely done, and now we can have fun with detail work that comes in over the top. All right, so I'm gonna push my canvas back here. I definitely need all this to have more set up and dry time, so I've got a little bit of grass that I can push in later, but I want my red to have as much time as possible. So I'm gonna go back up to the top and work on some really cute little clouds. They're super fun. And let's see, let's do our mama brush again. And I want some white paint. And let's see, let's start with that. That's good for a cloud. All right, so just white paint. And I'll go ahead and push it on. When I do, I just, I do hold the brush more like a pencil coming towards the surface. And then I just push it out in a circle. And so that's what makes those fun cloud shapes. And the cool thing about clouds is that they're very different, all of them. There's not a one way to do a cloud. 
I mean, for the most part, they can be pretty circular, but we all know that they have some very unusual shapes sometimes. And on these paintings here, I try to keep mine a little bit more childlike with the application of the clouds, so they kind of look more like cotton ball formations in the sky. At some point, I would like, if, if, well, I do have one painting if you are looking for a little bit more of an advanced cloud. There is a painting I did with the Faith Windmill and Church, and it has some more advanced clouds in the sky. Those that are a little bit more feathered out and have a little bit more of that realism quality to them. But on this one, we just, it's super fun just to have this, again, very childlike quality to it. That's part of the style. And then I'll just keep pushing this back in. You can keep making little circles if you want, or you can kind of switch gears and kind of put it in a nice little like feather pattern. So I kind of feather it out, but I turn the brush a little bit over to the side, just kind of lightly feather that in. And then let's do a few more that just kind of come onto the surface, but also off the surface a little bit. And that'll help balance out the composition of this. If I put a little tiny one up there too. And then we have some fun accents that we'll do on this too. So again, just little tiny circles. And then lightly kind of feather that out to get good coverage over the surface. Let's do a few more that kind of peek in on the sides here. And there. And then remember to kind of feather it back out. And one more right over here. Because on my model over here, I've got a lot of clouds happening. All those fun clouds filling the sky. All right, so my paint's still kind of tacky and wet, and I want to make sure that while it's still at the stage, I can go ahead and do the highlight colors that come in. So I will go ahead and push in a little accent here of, what do I, let's see, I'm trying to find the right brush. All right, so let's do a little bit of red and a little bit of the gold. So I've got my little bit brush here. So, and at first this will look a little bit bizarre. It's gonna look kind of garish over the top. But I will come back in and do a soft blend over the top so it'll look not so strange. Because right now it's very contrasting. But don't worry, I do a nice soft blend over the top. All right, so then I come back in with a little buddy brush and more white, or even the mama brush can work on this actually. All right, so here we go. And I do just a slight overlap over the top. See how that just softly blended that all back into the surface. I do kind of lay the brush over to the side. So now I have just a little hint of an accent that's a little bit dark around the edge, but then the white does a little bit of a soft blend into the rest of the color. So it really lightens it and softens it quite a bit, makes it more of like a subtle highlight that's happening. And we'll keep kind of pushing that back in. And then if you want, you can kind of continue on with a little bit of that feathering that happens to help kind of blend it all back into the center. All right, so that's super pretty. And we're gonna continue on and do this on the other ones. You can also do a really pretty uh, purple on here too, which is really dynamite with, hmm. We'll see how good my, you can mix purple. Purple can be mixed with red and blue, or we've got purple in your kit for sure. Uh, let's see. 
lovely purple. That's actually the easiest way to do it. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you what this purple looks like too, because it's really pretty in here too. So at first, again, it's gonna be a little bit, whoa, you know, very contrasting. And then let's do a little bit of gold. Okay. And then I'll come back in, I'll soften this back up with my white. So bigger brush here. A little bit of that overlay with the white on top. So that really softens it up a whole bunch. And then I can bring in a little bit more white to kind of softly blend into that light overlay that we just did so that it softly blends it all together towards the center. All right, so you can start to see the really fun, oh, I got a, I, somehow I got off. There, that's better. Man, if y'all say something, write to me, hey, <laughs> Move your canvas back. We can see the whole thing. <laughs> all right. So now let's continue on with all the little outer edges. Also, let me know if, you know, I do this. <laughs> I'm really trying to not do that. So, okay. Now, a little bit in red. Ta-da! Beautiful little twist into there. So let's go ahead and... Get that going around there. I'm gonna go ahead and do this on the rest of my clouds. Now I'll come in with those different colors. A little bit of that gold. And then down here. All right, now we have to come back in with the soft blend. So a little bit more white, little buddy brush, and come in right over the top. And that definitely helps soften that up quite a bit. All right, it's starting to get a little too pink. I'm losing my white, so sometimes you have to dry off the brush a little bit, reload into your pure white. And I'm working pretty quickly on this so that I don't, I don't want my red to set up and not be able to blend back in with the white. Thank you so much from the UK. <laughs> Fabulous, yay. All right, so I'm blending back into that. And I want to continue the soft blend in towards the center as well. So I'll go ahead and do my little feather stroke here, a little crisscross back and forth. A little bit of that, this is actually pretty nice looking up here, but I'm gonna go ahead and do a light little feathering back and forth, just making sure this one, I'll come back in with a lot of the white and just crisscross back and forth. Now I've got a really nice soft blend happening there with all of them. Yay! Hello, Sean. <laughs> you know what? I was late today, too. I mean, I started the show on time, but I... Mm, I was running late this morning. Today was something about today. Everything kind of all came at me at once. Uh, what am I gonna start doing? Well, this is a live show. I'm doing a lot of these every day. But if you mean in person, um, we have been able to start up. A lot of our venues can't do it just yet due to rules. But we definitely have in-studio shows every, for the most part, I think every Saturday here in Guthrie, Oklahoma. <clears throat> Excuse me, I need a little bit of water. And then we're also doing um, Ringwood, a winery out near the Enid Woodward area. They have shows once a month and they're able to do it there too. 
All right. All right, I think that's better. <clears throat> there, I gotta get, get that little clear in my throat. My grandma always used to make fun of me when I was little because she she thought it was so cute when I was little and I wanted to get everybody's attention. I'd go, ahem. <laughs> now I just, I'm like, I need to clear my throat. But, okay. Uh, let's see. Da -da -da -da. What else? Okay, so we've got all of these wonderful accents on our clouds now. And then I need to do, I want more dry time happening there, so I'm gonna wait. Let's do some really fun detail work on our mushroom. Okay, so we have this cute little mushroom right here, and I'm gonna do the fun dot trick. So I'm going to take a brush handle, and I will push down into the white paint. See how that makes a fun little dot right there? And then I'll go ahead and push straight forward. And this makes a really cute little polka dot every single time. So now I have a cute little polka dot mushroom. All right, the other thing we can do with this is make the little dot pattern that happens on the roof line. So I'll take that same brush, push straight down into the paint, and then continue this on all the way around. So this will take a little bit of time just to kind of do this. I'm gonna do it on both sides, all the way around here. Yeah, for our live shows, like what we're doing right now, I'm almost on it every day this week and we may continue on. I mean, there are days when I just can't because I have to, you know, Go do life, like go to a doctor's appointment or a dentist appointment or something. But for the most part, we want to do a lot more of these live shows online. And of course, we have all of our little kits that we sell. And then, yeah, but if you're wanting to do an in studio show on our website, like for sure, we've got our studio open right now. And it's really big and has all the room for social distancing. And we're real careful and um, we it, it's called um, I think book I think public parties on our website and you can always find it in the menu and we should have them almost every Saturday so yay it's very exciting all right so now we've got our white dots we have the white polka dots on the mushroom and then let me come back in with a little bit of fun detail on our mushroom here. So I need a teeny tiny little brush. So I've got my little bit here. All right, so here we go. Let's see, a little bit of gray now, okay? So I've got black and then white. I need this to be a little bit lighter. So a little bit more white. This will be a, a really pretty uh, charcoal color. So I'll do a quick little twist here into the paint. See, I kind of twist it between my fingertips. And then I'll go ahead and outline the base of my mushroom here. And then I'm gonna go up, looks like I'm gonna make a little mountain, like a little hill in the center. Thank you so much. All right, and then we'll take this down the mushroom here and down here, I'm gonna bring this closer to the camera too, so you can see. So, a little bit of a nuance here with the mushroom. So, I outlined, but then I came up a little bit for a little curve, and then I, I'm gonna make those straight lines all the way down, and then I've got one more part of the mushroom that'll kind of curve in through here, and then I'll soften that out with a little bit of white to help kind of blend that back in. So there's our little fun mushroom shape. And then if I want to work it all the way down to the base, which I do, so I'll need to pull out my canvas a little bit so I can have the right angle to work into this smaller area here. And 
and then I can do a little bit of shadowing here with that dark charcoal as well. And then we've got that little bit of that line work that happens with the mushroom. I want to make sure y'all can see this. So I do a few little diagonal lines. See how I brought in the little diagonal lines on there? Like the underside of the mushroom. So that's fun pattern work there. All right. And let's see. Now we need to do a little bit of line work at the top of the barn. My little puppy dog just ran through here. If y'all wanna know what my little puppy dog looks like, she's on Instagram a lot. She loves having her picture made. Well, I don't know if she does or not, but I love taking her picture. I think she's super cute. And we finally found out her breed. She is a blue lacy which is the official dog breed of Texas. So if you look it up, I just I always wanted to know because she has such a perfect temperament. She's so sweet that I thought, oh my gosh, now I know why people want to clone their animals, because man. But then I thought, well, probably won't be able to do that because that'd be crazy expensive. <laughs> but, but I want to know what her breed is, so you know. But then the other thing I love was that they live a super long time. So that's also awesome. Because I want her to be on this planet with me forever. But I'd love to have maybe more of her, another one in the future. All right, so now we're doing little lines in here to connect those little dots. And I've got my little buddy brush here and I wanna make sure that as I press into the white paint, I get a nice thin line edge right there on the edge of the brush. And then I just hold it like a pencil and I go ahead and connect each one of those little dots. Just with one little sketch of a line there. Again, just white paint, little buddy brush and little sketch. And take that all the way down. Sweet. All right, we also have more line work to do with our white in the windows. So we'll continue on with our little buddy brush here. And I will do a line all the way around each little window. And I'm gonna, mine's still a little bit wet, so I may have to do a quick little wipe off to the side. See how I kind of picked up a lot of wet paint there? And I want to keep this white really pure so it really pops out the contrast over the top. So again, ideally the best thing is to make sure and let it all set up and dry, which I can't do during class. And it's too loud and annoying to use a hair dryer, even though I love a hair dryer. I highly recommend them at home for this process. but y'all don't want to sit around and listen to your hair dryer right now, I can tell you. They're super, ugh, yeah. We tried it in a class once in, in the studio and it kind of, it's just, it's very loud and stressful and not, it kind of takes away from the relaxing part. So we just decided to be patient with our process during shows and kick back and have a drink and let things set up and dry and relax. All right, so here we go. More white, doing a quick little line around each side here. Picked up a lot of wet black on that one, so I'm gonna go ahead and come back into, did a wipe to get it off, and I'm gonna push back into that wet white paint. Also, take note of certain things that artists do to help stabilize their hands while they're doing certain moves. So I'm kind of using my other hand as a brace and it helps stabilize my hand here. You can do stuff like that too. I've actually watched certain artists that do very elaborate realism with city scenes and they actually have all kinds of armrests 
that they engineer with sticks and helps stabilize their hand in certain positions because they have to spend long hours, you know, doing lots of detail work. And also, these little lines don't have to be really perfect. These are old windows, very old and weathered, and so they can be a little bit imperfect too. Let that work for you. They call that distressed. <laughs> you just say, if somebody says, what happened to your window? You can just say, oh, it's just very old and weathered and distressed. You know, that's the, that's the new in thing, see? That's what you tell them. All right, now I'm gonna do a little line that goes all the way across. And then, this is bothering me because I can't get to the edge and I want to be able to get to the edge. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that all the way down. And then this one all the way down. Alright, so that gives me more range of motion, more freedom. So that's why I pulled that out so I could go all the way off the canvas. Alright. Then I want to do another little crisscross line right in front. So same brush, little buddy. And then, again, I need that range of motion to go all the way down to the base. So I'm gonna start here at the top and we'll just do, a, we'll just pull a diagonal line all the way down. And I'm holding the brush like a pencil, just kind of going all the way down. Oh, that is a great question. <laughs> um, what do I do with all the paintings? Be looking for it. I'm about to post a picture of almost 800 paintings that we are going to try to start selling this weekend. Because I we're out of room. And so we're selling them real cheap. We're gonna start to do that this Saturday. And just do like a giant sidewalk sale. So I have been selling a lot of them in our studio, but we're really gonna try to push for a bigger sale this weekend. So I'm so happy you asked that question. Because we have hundreds. <laughs> to sell hundreds so it's when you see the picture you'll you'll be blown away like we just did a big clean out we have a ton all right I'm gonna continue on with that diagonal motion and these other cute little windows so same thing here we do a little diagonal diagonal all the way down here corner to corner same thing Sometimes, okay, so my brush got a little thick and it makes it hard to do a line edge because it the bristles will fill up with paint. So I got I had to clean it off, reload, get back to that really thin line there, and then I can come back in and I can get a much thinner line. So you kind of have to keep an eye on that, make sure you're okay. Come back up to this guy. See, he's, this window right here, that's, that's what I call a little more weathered and distressed. <laughs> yeah, we like that. All right, so let's see, let's see. Um, a lot of white detail has been done. Now we need to bring in the really pretty look of the old weathered look coming in over the top of the red barn. So it'll look like black line work. And I want my mama brush again and some black paint here. And I, because I like the really nice thin line on the edge. So I'll go ahead and push back and forth here into the black paint. Ta-da! All right, and then I'm gonna start by making this horizontal line that will just kind of peek through right in here. Just one little sketch of a line, and then let's continue that on there. And it doesn't have to go completely through, again, just that light sketch. And I also wanna firm up that flag over the top, so then I will go ahead and firm up that black line here. All right, and then across. And then down and then across again. So that really helps make that flag just pop right out in front. And howdy everybody, we've got new people on here. So we've got Brooke, Heather, Debbie. Oh yes, 
Thank you so much. <laughs> I told you to tell me you did. Good job. Yeah, when I go to put it back, I don't always put it back in the right place. Thank you so much. All right, so we're back on track. All right, now let's continue on with those little black lines that will make our light. This is that look of like old wood coming in over the top. All right, so now what I want to do is just little tiny uh, like vertical strokes that come down and definitely keep these more of like a light sketch. So you definitely don't want it continuing all the way through. So just lightly do little vertical lines and they're kind of just random. So this is where that old wood comes into play here. And see how I didn't take that all the way down. I don't want that to happen because I just want it to look like it's old wood happening. It's just that reference. It's that kind of like an abstract reference to that old the old wood slats coming down. Let's do one more right in there. All right, so that's a really fun look now. And then we can also firm up our little lines in the center of the flag too. Want to make sure our line edge is super thin happening. All right, so this will help me do those lines in here in the flag too. So I'm going to take that line all the way down. This will help accentuate the red lines of the flag. And here we go again. And then I also want to get this guy right here, that one little line right in there. And I need to accentuate the heart line that comes around. So I got to come back in with my little bit because the straight line cannot come around the heart. Little bit's always really necessary to do little curves. So I do a quick little twist here into the paint. That gives me a nice fine point. And then I hold the brush like a pencil. You can also use your little pinky to help stabilize your hand. All right, so you can see how that really made that little heart kind of pop forward too. So it's, that's what's nice about those black lines that come in. Hmm, man, we got it. We have a lot done. So we're getting a lot done here. We have a lot of our line work done. I still have to do some grass, and then I still have to do my lettering. But I've been trying to wait for this red barn <laughs> to dry. And man, that red is just really well. I laid it on super, super thick, so that's why it's taking so long to dry. So I'm going to come in with the lettering next, and then. Uh, don't let me forget about the grass. I promise. I'm saying it out loud so I won't forget. Because sometimes I forget about my grass and I don't want to. Um, let's see here. So, working at home, I always recommend using a pencil first. Make sure this is all dry. And then that way you can do whatever word you want. And we are also, um, today, I promise I'll get some more templates posted for lettering and some fun techniques that you can do. There's a couple of different ways you can do it. You can either use a template to trace around, or um, I wanna encourage you to use a digital format, and I need to teach you, I need to do a video on teaching you how to use graphite paper with digital format paper too, to help do a lot of our fun work. It's a super neat cheating method. Uh, a lot of artists have it as a secret, so I'm gonna share my secret with you on that. But for right now, I'm gonna go ahead and just freehand this on here. So I'm gonna make a big old L like this. I loop this around. And then come back up and make my O. So I'm trying to kind of flank that pitch, that roof pitch line there, and then I'll make my E. So I want it to kind of come in around that and be balanced on either side. 
And if you've let yours, I can't do this, mine's all wet, so I've, I'm, I'm committed to paint and what I've got. But if you have all this dry at home, at this point you can actually come in with a Sharpie to come in over the top. And that is a really, or a paint pen, and that's another fun way to kind of cheat. It gives you a lot more control. And I'm all about, this is what we, it's like legal cheating, it's all good. It just, it's a nice way to make it easier. And I promise real artists use, they use all that stuff. They use a lot of help when they can. All right, so we've got our little bit brush and we've got our black paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and twist into that paint here. That'll give me a nice fine point. And then I will go ahead and start to follow along. And I'll tell you, I got a little bit of dry brush on this, but interestingly enough, dry brush look with the fonts is pretty popular right now. So if you do get a little bit, you just kind of have to decide if, what you're comfortable with, but it's actually a fun look that's pretty popular. So if you want to leave some of that dry brush, you can. I can't hardly see, oh, there it goes. I did kind of get to the right angle where I could see where my pencil line was. Come back up. See, I have a little bit of dry brush there, and I think it's a nice look. So there's actual fonts that come with just dry brush, and they actually just leave it just like that. So it's actually trending. So you can, people say, ooh, you know, you missed a spot. You go, no, no, I meant, I meant to do that. <laughs> All right, so we have our words done now. And as promised, I've not forgotten about the lovely little grass at the end. And I'll just try to be careful. I do have a little bit of that wet red paint down there. But oh well. All right, so I'm still in frame. I wanna make sure I still got the canvas. Let's do that just to be safe. Okay, all right, so now I've got green for grass, a little bit of white. I also like to have a little bit of some gold nearby too. I think that's really pretty to mix in. All right, so I've got a little bit of some gold nearby, my green, my white, and then believe it or not, sometimes a little bit of black nearby is quite lovely. That adds a little bit of a nice shadow in with the grass. So I'll go ahead and push that off to the side there so I can kind of work back and forth between all of those. All right, so quick little, too much gold on the brush. I want, the majority of my paint, I want to be more of that green and white. So I'm washing my brush off, drying it off really well. You don't want any excess water in the brush that creates water runs. So it's just moist, all ready to go. And then I'm gonna go ahead and push into this beautiful green, little bit of white. And then I need to pull up from the very base. Can I do that? Yes, I can. Okay, I didn't have to move my canvas out. Now I'm gonna to have to be watchful of how much of my red, my, um, say that 10 times fast, wet red. That's trickier to say than you think, wet red. I have to be mindful of how much that might blend in. I think it's holding up pretty well. I'm super glad, good. Not having to worry about it too much. And actually, it would probably just create a dark shadow look. But I'm coming in with that green and that white. And I'm starting at the base, holding the brush, just like you'd hold a pencil, and just pulling straight up, and then lifting off with a light hand. So I'll take this all the way across here it's like we have a little bit of this spring green grassy pasture happening in front of our beautiful barn here. So I'll do this as my first layer of color all the way across. Again, just green and white and then just pull straight up. And I do keep all of this in the foreground, so it basically has just a little light coverage over everything. Now, what I don't want to have happen is have peekaboo of any of the design work in the background. So, for example, what I mean by that is, like, you don't want the hard line of the edge of the barn showing through the grass. So, what I might do there 
is at a little bit more of a shadow. So I'll just barely touch into the black. You can see how tiny, wait, am I in frame? There, okay. <laughs> I have all these conversation bubbles and I can't, this is like gone, I can't see. But okay, little, wait a minute. I'm gonna show you how tiny that black is right there on the end of the brush. So that's super tiny, very subtle. So I'll go ahead and push that in. So that creates a little tiny amount of shadow. So what it essentially does is it mixes in with that white and that green and almost takes it to like a dark charcoal gray. So it keeps it from being too harsh, but does add a nice depth of shadow to the grass. So again, very light-handed amount of black, but just enough to kind of create that dark shadow at the base. And just lots of repetition, soft blend in there. And I definitely want to make sure that it's a little bit more impactful and heavier handed with the darker black tones right at that line edge of that barn because I'm trying to obscure that line. I don't want it to peek through there. So I'll keep coming all the way through. And if you want to add a little bit of warmth to your grass, you can always come in with a little bit of the gold hues. Thank you. And I'll just kind of push through little tiny gold highlights. Just kind of random, just kind of sprinkle those through as well. All the way across. All right, beautiful. Yay! I think we're actually all done. Um, you know what, I missed a black line right there. I'm gonna get that, let's drive me nuts now. <laughs> and then there's one other thing you can do. I'm not going to touch it right now because I, everything's just so wet uh, in this area still for me. And so I don't want to run the risk of too much of a mix of a muddy color. But you can always come back in and do a more painterly white over some of these surfaces. Or you can just forget it and just let the white of the canvas be your white here too. All right, I absolutely do not want any water runs. So I made sure that my brush was very clean and dry now. I wiped it off with a towel. I've got one more black line in here I need to do. I'm gonna go ahead and press back and forth. I almost didn't catch that because of the Sharpie line underneath, but I can see now that it wasn't quite done with the paint. So I'm gonna pull that all the way down. All right, so now I've got everything outlined in. Okay, and then the very final step is signing your masterpiece. So I would say let's be traditional and let's do just a you know quick little signature down here and you can do it with a little bit brush. I'm looking for a really tiny one. Oh, here we go. So here's our little bit brush. Let's do a real quick little twist into the paint. Get a nice fine point. And then we'll just go ahead and sign. And some people like to just do a quick little initial. I'm gonna go ahead and write tipsy. And then artist. Okay, so there's my signature. All right, we are so done. It's awesome. Okay, so there's our beautiful barn that we have done for y'all today. This is beautiful. We sell the kits online, tipsyartist.com. And again, just as a recap, they come with all these, there's more shapes in this, but they come with all these fun little shapes that you can trace around. And then they come with your, you know, your brush sets and your paints and your canvas and all that fun stuff. And then I've also been throwing in a complimentary little like coloring page with fun little encouraging quotes and pictures for you to color in. They just help brighten your day so you can color those in and then cut them out 
and you can place them around your house and they help cheer you up. So we all need all the cheering up that we can get. So give yourself as much uh, positive love and affirmation as you can during this time. Uh, so those are all for you online or if you have all the supplies and you just need the templates, we have that option as well. So however you need to work it, we've got lots of different uh, variables for options on how to order stuff where you can break it up or all together. And then we are coming live to you again tomorrow um, at noon. And I have no idea what I'm painting right now. So something awesome, I'm sure. I just, my mind is totally blanking right now, but uh, check our event calendar. You can always find all of our events on Facebook or on our event page on our uh, website, tipsyartist.com. They're all just linked to our Facebook events with Eventbrite. So yeah, so just, Sign up with a free ticket, and that way I'll always send you reminders and let you know when it's happening. Yeah, we'll see you tomorrow at noon. And we're so thankful for y'all joining us today. We had a great time, and we'll see you tomorrow.